Battles of Westeros is a war game that's set in the world of George R. R. Martin's Game of Thrones and that uses the battle lore system. It's designed by Robert Kuba and published by Fantasy Flight Games. In Battles of Westeros, two players face off as the Stark and Lannister armies in a battle for victory. Each battle lasts about one and a half hours. There are some smaller expansions that add extra commanders, as well as allied forces like the Tullys or the Hill Tribes, and there's a major expansion that adds another whole army, the House Baratheon. Players begin Battles of Westeros by picking a side and choosing a scenario. They set up the board and collect commanders and units according to that scenario's battle plan. Now the battle plan is also going to lay out the victory conditions for each side, which might be capturing commanders, destroying units, or crushing the enemy's morale. Each round of Battles of Westeros has four phases. Rally, Marshalling, Command, and Regroup. During the Rally phase, the player who has the most command tokens left on their command board gets the Momentum token, so that means they become the first player. All tokens are then removed from the commanders back to your command board, and all of the units that were used last turn are refreshed, so their banners are turned around so the color of this round faces their player. In the marshalling phase, each player rolls a number of dice determined by the battle plan, and then collects order tokens that match the faces they rolled. They're also going to draw leadership cards from their deck, according to the battle plan. In the command phase, players take turns playing leadership cards and order tokens. Now, an order token is red, green, or blue, and has a shield on it. Now, these allow you to give orders to a particular unit of that color. Also, the valor token with a gauntlet on it allows you to order any unit, and the black flag rally token lets you gain one morale, or you can decrease your morale by one in exchange for refreshing one unit. A leadership card can let you order multiple units or make use of special tactics. The card is assigned to a commander and the cost of each order you want to give is paid by placing a command token on that commander's card, making sure not to exceed their command limit. Now, if you meet the conditions for the tactic that's listed at the bottom of the card, you can use it at the time indicated. An ordered unit can move their speed, listed in the order table, and then attack. If you order more than one unit, then all of them have to complete their movement before anyone can attack. Now, no unit can move through or stop in an occupied hex. So a ranged attack targets a unit that's within line of sight and within the range distance that's listed on the attacking unit's reference. A melee attack targets an adjacent unit. To attack, a player declares their target and then rolls a number of dice that's determined by their unit's color. A hit is scored for every shield that's rolled that matches the color of the defending unit, as well as every valor symbol. A target unit takes damage by removing one figure per hit. If a unit loses all of its figures, then that unit is destroyed. And if a unit is destroyed, then the army takes a morale hit, one to three, depending on the color of the unit. If a unit takes damage but is not destroyed, then they have to retreat a number of hexes equal to the number of rally symbols rolled. A unit that cannot retreat takes damage instead. Now, when a unit is first attacked in melee, an engagement token is placed on the line between it and the attacking unit. The defender is now engaged and they can't move away or attack a unit other than the one that first attacked it without disengaging, which triggers a free attack. A commander is not destroyed, but has to be captured after all of the rest of its unit has been defeated. To capture a commander, you have to roll a number of hits in one turn equal to that commander's capture rating. Once a unit has attacked, it turns its banner around to the other side. Many units also have special abilities or traits that affect their movement, their attacks, or even their ability to counterattack. Terrain is also going to affect the battle by providing obstacles you can't move through, blocking line of sight, or acting as an objective in certain scenarios. If a player runs out of leadership cards and order tokens, or just doesn't want to play anymore, they can pass. The other player can keep playing until they feel that they're finished. In the final regroup phase, players deal with conditions like being on fire. They also check to see if any of the victory conditions have been met and they discard down to one leadership card and one order token. Players can then recover morale up to the nearest marked morale break, 
and the round token is advanced and the new round begins. So what I really love about Battles of Westeros is that it's a very fast playing, tense, tactical war game. The length of this game is great. A battle only lasts about an hour and a half and you get to the meat of the conflict pretty much right away, um, which means that you could even play more than one battle in one night. The tactical challenges are also really interesting because not only are you responding to your opponent, but you've also got to manage limited resources. You've only got so many order tokens, you've only got so many leadership cards, and they may not let you control the units you want to control, so there's a real bit of strategy that's involved there. Now unfortunately, that uh, good length of play that I mentioned doesn't apply at all to the setup. This game takes a long time to set up and it's really labor intensive because not only do you have to set up the board, but you also have to assemble the units. And I found a couple times that that long setup time actually prevents such a great game from hitting the table at all. So another con that some people see in this game is the level of randomness. So if you're really into strategy, there is a little bit of randomness in this game. There are dice rolled with the order tokens. There are leadership cards that are drawn randomly. So you are going to face that. If you're a purely strategy person, that might bother you a little bit. However, this game has a beautiful, immersive theme. If you are a fan of George R. R. Martin's books, Game of Thrones, or if you watch the TV show, you're really going to enjoy getting in there and meeting the people that you saw in the show and read in the books, experiencing those battles. And this game actually is quite simple to learn. So if you are a fan of that theme and those battles, then you can jump into this game even if you're not a war gamer and start having fun right away. 